Last month for Home Assistant saw the release of the Home Assistant green hardware and also the release of the new logo for Home Assistant, which I have to say I've gotten used to already. The software itself was a quite a quiet month, but then halfway through the month they came along and released the wake word functionality. So this basically means that you can talk to Home Assistant and control your smart home just by voice. So it feels like we're not too far away now from being able to get rid of those Amazon and Google devices. You can use it with things like the M5 stack and a few of the devices as well, or even build one of your own. The same can't be said for this month though, it's quite a jam-packed month of functionality. So let's take a look. First up is a new entity type called To Do, and this allows you to create to-do lists. You can create multiple to-do lists as well. So you can have local to-do lists. This would have been useful for one of my recent videos of NFC tags. I had it as input booleans, but I think using to-do lists would have been really great. And with this, they've also changed the shopping list functionality to use this new to-do list entity type instead. As well as having local shopping lists, you can also use the Todoist or Google Tasks integrations as well, which are also new for this release. This is really useful for me because I use Google Tasks a lot. And the next piece of new functionality is something that feels like it's a must have for every release now, and that's another update to the tile card. I've really liked the tile card update so far, and I really like this one as well. So instead of just having state information on the tile card, you can now have attribute information as well. And not only that, you can have multiple attributes on the card as well. It's not just for the climate entity either. You can use this for any types of entities. So hopefully this now means I can ditch some of my templates and custom cards that I use. The next one is an update to the energy dashboard so that you can filter by date range. I don't use the energy dashboard. Despite the integration probably being out for two years or so, I'm still using custom entities to manage my solar and energy. So I definitely need to get on to doing that. The next change I'm really excited about because I think it's going to benefit a lot of people that use Home Assistant and that's changes to the conditional card. So the conditional card allows you to filter by certain states of entities etc to show a certain card but now we've got three pieces of functionality that are new for the conditional card. So you can now display a card based on who's logged in to your dashboard so instead of having multiple dashboards for people you might be able to consolidate into one and just do it based on who is actually looking at the dashboard. You can also use numeric state now, so this might be useful for things like climate for example, so say if a room's really cold, colder than you expect it to be, then you could show the card so that people can boost the heating. And also the last one is screen size, which is an interesting one. So depending on whether your screen size is big or small, well particularly the resolution, then it will show the card or it won't show the card. I'll be interested to know how the screen size one works for tablets because when you flip the orientation between landscape and portrait, will the cards reappear and disappear or not? As soon as this is in general release, I'm definitely going to try this out. The next one is a small change, but useful if you've got issues with your Home Assistant instance. So they've introduced a safe mode where you can restart Home Assistant into safe mode. This will disable your custom integrations and also dashboard resources as well that are custom. So this will be really good if you've got problems to try and narrow it down and figure out what's going on. The next change is an improvement to scripts. So you can already use variables in scripts at the moment, but you have to do it manually. Now they've introduced it into the UI, so you've now got fields where you can define variables really easily, and you can pass this information to other scripts. So for example, you might have a script that creates some information, and then that variable gets passed on to the next script. I think this functionality is particularly useful for people who are either scared of getting into YAML or are trying to just avoid using it as much. I'm certainly trying to avoid using it as much because Home Assistant's really powerful itself in the user interface these days. The next one is a bit of a techie one and it's something that I looked into recently but got a little confused and stopped looking at it. It's called Improv Wi-Fi, which is kind of a protocol. So what it does is, is it allows you to connect devices to your Wi-Fi network network using Bluetooth. So they've now introduced this into Home Assistant, which is really great. So basically what it means is, if you've got one of these devices that conforms to this standard, then it means that you can set it up probably without using their app. So at the moment, you might have to go into their app and then it will connect to the device itself and then you enter the Wi-Fi details. Whereas now you can enter the Wi-Fi details directly into Home Assistant. They've added this functionality for ESP Home, so I'm definitely going to give it a go with that. And then I'll get back to you on how successful I am. 
This functionality I would say is particularly good news for people that are developing things with ESP32 as it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi functionality. The Matter standard over the last year or so has gained a lot more traction than I expected to be honest and there's quite a few devices out there already. Well now there's Matter 1.2 and Home Assistant has already integrated this standard into Home Assistant for this release. This is really great because it's got some bug fixes in there that improve stability. This will allow new device types to work over Matter, for example like robot vacuums. So I expect a lot of devices over the next year or two to start appearing being Matter 1.2 compatible. An interesting thing mentioned in the release notes is that apparently a lot of smart home companies are starting to use Home Assistant as their test bed for testing their Matter devices. This is really great because it should mean that it's got really good compatibility with Home Assistant when you buy a Matter device. Other changes to mention for this release are that the Fitbit integration has had an overhaul, so you can now add it via the UI like you can with a lot of integrations. They've also added the nutrition sensors as well. And also the HomeKit bridge integration has had an update. This is a really nice one whereby it will automatically add and remove devices. This is good because a lot of people use the HomeKit integration. Most of the other new integrations we've already talked about other than a Tammy 4 water filter. I'm not sure how popular this is going to be, but it's great to see new integrations every month. For breaking changes this month, I would say there are a few that are worth looking into. So there's one for UV level for the open UV integration where the values have changed. The precipitation value, the unit of measure for open weather map has changed from millimetres to millimetres per hour to make it correct. The custom polling interval which is available for some integrations is being removed. You can still use it but you have to use a service call instead. I do use this for the Google Maps integration but I had a look and I already use the service so I don't need to change anything. The time frame for the sleep sensor for the Withings integration has changed so have a look at that if you use it and also some Z-Wave changes. There seems to be Z-Wave changes every month. I don't use Z-Wave myself, so I don't know how stable it is, but leave a comment below and let me know how stable it is each month and whether these changes impact you or not. It's been another great month of changes from the Home Assistant team, so make sure you clear out time in your schedule to update your Home Assistant instance so that you can benefit from the new changes. Well, that's it for today, so please consider subscribing and liking the video if you haven't already, and comment down below with your favourite changes. So thanks, until next time. <laughs>